just about ready to go here from Minneapolis. 36 degrees here for first pitch, and it's overcast as well, so pretty chilly out there. Yeah, you see there Chavez coming in there on the third baseline, getting ready for the slapper. Osmondson there lets the first pitch go 1-0. Here's the second pitch from Levitt. That one left, another ball, now 2-0 count here to Osmondson. That one hit back at Levitt, over there to Dre at first, and the first out there for the Gophers is gone. Next batter here, for South Dakota State is Rosalind Carrillo. Here we can see a replay. Levitt doing a good job, just staying calm and collected, getting it over to Dre, not making the play too difficult for herself and making the nice, easy routine play there. That first pitch in there for a strike. That one there, a little high. We see Kinch not being able to hold on to that one, but no matter, it's even to count there, 1-1. One, one. So Carrillo, she's from Palmdale, California, played her high school softball at Highland High School. Sophomore on this Jackrabbits team. Carrillo so far on the season, leading this Jackrabbits team with a 384 batting average. A great person to have up in this two spot as she gets up early here. Now 3-1 hitters count to her. Yeah, after the quick out for the pitcher, Levitt kind of struggling with her control a little bit. 3-1 and one now. So we'll see what happens here on this 3-1 pitch to the two hitter. That one swung and a miss. Now full count here. Levitt doing a good job getting back in these counts. She got down early there to Osmondson, was able to retire her. Now here gets down early here to Carrillo and is able to come back in the count now full. That one high there. So a walk issued here early from Levitt. There we see the rise ball just rising a little bit too much for Levitt there. Not able to keep that one down. That's been a problem so far, just escaping the zone a little bit. And the South Dakota State hitters have not been willing to chase. So she'll have to see if she can bring those pitches down. That one there left down, popped out to right field. Very nice play there made by Chloe Evans. She's able to throw that one back in and we see the runner there, Carrillo, with no chance to advance over to second. Yeah, nice comeback there by Levitt after pit, uh, walking um, Carrillo there on six pitches. She's able to, to um, get Helverson to swing at that one on the first pitch, and she flies out in foul territory. Now two down with uh, that runner still at first base. There we see the first pitch there to Lennox, a strike now at 0-1 count to her. ball there so far. 1-1 one, one count to Lennox. Lennox so far this season with four home runs hitting as you can see 269 on this even with 14 RBI. She has eight total extra base hits so a very strong person to have here in the cleanup spot for South Dakota State. That one passed Evans there. That one will be extra bases. The run will come around. Play at the plate and she is safe. So the first run across the board goes to South Dakota State here now of one nothing with that RBI double from Lennox. 
Yeah, just out of the reach there for the right fielder, Chloe Evans. She wasn't able to get to that one. And early in this ball game, it's one nothing South Dakota State as Carrillo came in to score that run. Now there's a runner still in, uh, in scoring position now at second base. That's Lennox. So we'll see if uh, the pitcher um, Levitt can get out of this jam here early in this one. Yeah, perfectly placed ball there by Lennox. Push that one right down the line. Evans just not able to reach that. And ultimately the throw to the plate was in time, just wasn't completely on schedule there. And the runner scores. And now we have Lindsey Culliver up here at the plate. Culver, she's batting 340 on the season. That one high there, 1-1 one, one count here. Yeah, Culver, a very, very dangerous hitter here. Seven home runs on the season, nine doubles and a triple to her name. So someone that South Dakota State wants up here and that Minnesota has to be a little bit scared of here with a runner on second, though, though they have two outs. Now it's two and one on Culver. Yeah, big spot here for Levitt. Got to come back. Can't keep letting these Jackrabbits hitters get up early in the count. She's got to continue to attack. That one, Chavez makes a nice play and gets the Gophers out of the inning, but not after 1-1 one, one was scored there on the double by Lennox. time constraints we now move ahead in the action the inning Cheyenne Masterson in the last series versus Western Illinois she had three at bats three home runs um, in that series there yeah a lot of power for Masterson seven home runs on the season does a really good job putting that ball where she wants it um, Levitt's going to want to make sure to keep her pitches down in the zone, not allow her to power through any of these pitches there. She does a good job getting ahead there, 0-1. That one high misses there. Now evens the count 1-1 one, one here to Masterson. That one hit hard in the gap there. Will be a single there for Masterson. We've seen early these batters from South Dakota State getting up and ahead in accounts and then being able to turn on the ball, put it into play. There we see another hit, hit very hard right past Chavez. Yeah, Masterson, she's red hot right now. Um, she continues her um, uh, powerful offensive play. And of course, with those three home runs in her past three at-bats, and now a sharp double, or not double, but a sharp ball hit to left field. They receive Brooke Dumont there, following that one backwards, now down in the count 0-1. Uh, the catcher so far this season batting 269, a couple home runs um, with 14 RBIs. The freshman, um, Dumont, is the only freshman starting in today's lineup here uh, for the Jackrabbits. There we see the second pitch evens the count now 1-1. One, one. So we, as we have been seeing, Lavitt getting that first pitch strike, but then kind of falling back in the counts, just like the last batter, Masterson, we see her letting that high rise ball get out of the zone here. It evens the count back to 1-1. One, one. That one there fouled back, a strike there now, 1-2 and two count here to Dumont. Pretty decent crowd here on this Wednesday afternoon, um, quite a few fans brave in the cold here in Minneapolis. Yeah, the fans that were able to make it here in this beautiful chilly day here in Minnesota are in for quite a show with two really, really good teams. And we've already seen it so far today um, with a lot of base runners, hits already, and currently are seeing quite a duel here between the two teams. And of course, this is a rescheduled game from last week. These two teams were supposed to play a double header 
last Wednesday, and now they're just playing one today to make up for that. Yeah, and that makes the game even more special too, where you only have one game, you know, you can only come away from the series with one win. So you got, you're going to try and top your opponent to get out of this um, ultimately victorious. And here we see already a, a very strong game. And that pitch perfect in there by Levitt. That one drops in there for a strike and gets Levitt's first strike out of the game. Yeah, nice effort there by the Golden Gopher starting pitcher Levitt. Um, you know, threw a few balls there, but she was able to bear down a little bit. We had a couple foul balls. And yeah, perfect pitch there right down the middle and uh, she caught uh, Dumont there looking. Now we have Jocelyn Carrillo here up to the plate. Uh, the center field sophomore is batting 264 on the season. Uh, another batter that has hit a couple home runs. Most of the South Dakota State has a couple home runs on their plate. That one there high. Now the count 2-0 here early. There we see it. We'll see what Levitt does here now down 2-0. That one in there low. So it puts the count to 3-0 with a runner on first. So no open base there to push a runner into scoring position. She, Going to try to get back here and continue to attack the batter. Of course, head coach Ritter in her second season as the head coach here in 2022. Served as the pitching coach of Minnesota for a long time. Um, of course, in baseball and softball, it's sometimes weird to see um, the head coach go out there for a mound visit if you're not going to make a change. But of course, she has a pitching background serving as the pitching coach for 13 seasons. That one is not in there for a strike. So the 3-1 pitch sends Carrillo there over to first. So now runners on first and second here with only one out for the nine hitter. We have Doherty here coming up to the plate. That was a pretty close pitch there, but it was inside. So another walk there for the pitcher Levitt. She needs to get ahead in these in these uh, counts. Um, she's been falling behind as she does again here as she's facing Doherty now, uh, the left fielder. Yeah, and this is big spot. The South Dakota State team is not going to let you get away easily, and so far they haven't. You know, Levitt has gotten down early, and that's allowed to have her to bring pitches back into the zone that South Dakota State has either hit or if she hasn't brought it back to the zone, they've taken advantage and they've been able to walk and get on base. So we'll see if Levitt is able to come back um, with only one out here now to count 1-1. One, one. Yeah, you're right about that. The South Dakota State team is a very good team. Like I mentioned early in the broadcast, a good non-conference opponent for the Golden Gophers as they sit at the top in the Summit League standings. Seven and two in Summit League play. That one there fouled back. Keeps the count one, two, and yeah, the South Dakota State team with a lot of offensive potential last weekend, they scored 26 runs. Um, and that was a very big turn there. Um, they played Western Illinois. They outscored them in their three-game series 26-0, to zero, um, beating them in less than seven innings every single game. So, And that one there, not in for a strike. That one will be a ball. But Levitt getting close there, but is not ultimately able to hit that strike zone there at the one-two count. Yeah, really big pitch here now at two and two, one out, and runners at first and second. We'll see what Levin could do here. Looking to get out of another jam here in the second inning. That one catches the outside corner and does not 
get into the strike zone. So they're up 1-2. Brings the back to the count full now. 3-2. Doherty doing a really good job watching those close pitches. Those are some hard pitches to let go. Uh, but ultimately, the count is full now here with only one out. That one to second is dropped, and the runner is safe. So a little bit of a defensive error there. Not sure if it was a missed toss there by Dowell or just wasn't able to be held by Stralo there at second. But that puts the bases loaded here with one out headed back to the top of the order. Yeah, look at the replay there. It looked like the toss from Dowell was right there. But, yeah, second baseman uh, Stralo wasn't able to take that one in. So that's, that's a tough error, especially for the pitcher Levitt, who was looking to get that second out of the inning. And now she'll have to uh, go back to the top of the lineup as the right fielder was Munson's up now with the bases loaded. Yeah, Emily Osmondson here doing, uh, she grounded out back to the pitcher hard in the first inning. See if she can put the ball in play. If she puts the ball in play to the right side, most likely a run will score here. So that one's fouled back. Now you just count 1-1. One, one. Yeah, there you see what we show the replay again. Just bounces off the hand there of Stralo. That one fouled back there by Osmondson. But just a play that probably should have been made. As a pitcher, you know, you're hoping that that play is made. Either one out or two outs there with a possible double play position there with runners moving. But ultimately, no outs come out of it. And we see now bases loaded here and still in that one-out position. Here's the one-two pitch from Levitt. That one hit hard with the left fielder playing in. Runners will come around. Two-run score ready. The third run is headed home. And three-run RBI double there from Osmondson. So Jensen playing tight there in left field. And ultimately, that hurts the Gophers, allowing three runs on that hit. Now, And we... So now they bring the runner back, and there will be a home run there. Not exactly sure what happens, but Carrillo comes in and hits a home run. So ultimately, the runners are put back on the bases. We'll have to figure out what exactly that was. But that one heads over the fence, so Carrillo comes up with one pitch and puts that one way out of the park here and brings the lead now to five nothing here for the jackrabbits yeah that ball was crushed uh roslyn uh Carrillo's, uh eighth home run of the season and yeah huge moment there for the jackrabbits as they take a big lead early in this one that one popped up there dowell calls everyone off and gets out of this inning here. So a weird turn of events, um, but the Jackrabbits end up scoring four runs there um, with the home run from Carrillo and will head into the bottom of the second inning here with their new five run lead here on Big Ten Plus. So still four runs come across the board, and now the Gophers down 5 nothing, with Megan Dre up to the plate here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, I think we were all confused there because I thought after that home run with that double, I thought it was um, like 6 or 7 nothing, but yeah, that, that was a bit confusing there at first. Here we see Dre get down early 0-2. Clans are doing a very good job attacking these gopher batters early. And here we see now strikes out Gray uh, there, uh, or Dre there on three pitches. We, the, we see the umpire with his hand up there. Not exactly sure what the exact call is, but we ultimately see four more runs come across the board. So only five runs 
here for South Dakota State, but an interesting spot here early in the game <laughs> as Glasner, Glanzer there continues to attack there. S five straight strikes thrown, and these go for batters keep swinging and missing. That one left there. Kinch up to the plate here. Kinch having a pretty good season so far this year. The sophomore catcher hitting 237. That one hit up the middle. And that one squeaks by the second baseman Culver there. So runner will be put on. Not sure if that one will be called an error or a single. That one now the Jackrabbits make an error. So we'll see if the Golden Gophers can take advantage here. Dowell here up to the plate. Now the senior transfer from Auburn so far for the Gophers hitting 255 on the season um, with three home runs and five doubles so far, even a triple on her name. A really great defensive shortstop that has been doing a good job putting the ball into play here for the Gophers so far this season. 2-1 count here from Glanzer. This is a big spot for the Gophers to try to get some of those runs back that they let off on the home run last inning. Glanzer there gets the ball in their first strike now, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, so far in this inning, Glanzer's done a really good job at throwing strikes. Still only one out after that error. That one left there by Dowell. Called a ball, so we'll put the count to full here now. 3-2 here with one out in the bottom of the second. And very good eye there, leaves that. Now runners on first and second here. Big spot here, runners at first and second with one out. After Glanzer doing a really good job attacking these batters early, has let some of these Gopher batters get up in these last couple counts. And you saw the walk there to Dowell, now down early to Travis. Travis leaves that one there. That one was pretty clearly in the strike zone. You saw her almost looking like she wanted to swing, but just a little bit too late. Decides to hold back, and that one called the strikes, evening the count there one to one. That one there low in the dirt. Runners stay. Dumont doing a good job keeping that ball in front of her there. Keeping only one runner in scoring position now with runners on first and second. Two one pitch misses. So now with three one count here to Chavez as we see a little bit of a mound visit coming from the South Dakota State players. That one high and outside, so the bases are loaded to head back at the top of the order. And now the Gophers have a little bit of a chance here. That Gophers have an opportunity here to get on the scoreboard and crawl back in this game. There you see Esplin really far ahead of that one. One thing that Esplin does not do a lot of is swing and miss. Does a really good job, not striking out a lot. Um, has four more walks and strikeouts on the season. So someone that does a really good job either putting the ball in play or taking that walk. That one left there, even to count there, 1-1. One, one. Basically enough so far in this game, as the bases are loaded, the Gophers still don't have a hit. This be a big spot for the hit for the Gophers here. That one fouled off there, count now 1-2. Big spot here for Esplin. Like I said, doesn't strike out a lot, but this is the spot you don't want to strike out with bases loaded because, you know, we put a ball in play here. Most likely with the speed of Esplin, you're scoring a run at somewhere on the uh, on the field. So it'll be a big spot to either put this ball in play or make sure that pitch isn't in the strike zone. That one hits Esplin. So the runner will score there on a hit by pitch. So first run for the Gophers come across the board, and the Gophers now 
are down 5-1 with a run coming across the board without a hit. Now we have up to the plate Ellie Jensen here in her first at bat. Flew out to left. Fly ball here probably scores a run here for the Gophers. That one fired directly back at Masterson. Masterson making a great play. Only one out there, but a very big out here now with two outs for South Dakota State. Stralo leaves that one here. Sydney Stralo back up to the plate. Struck out in her first at bat. Um, Stralo so far on this season batting 250 now after that strikeout. Um, someone that has a lot of power, electric, a lot of extra base hit potential here. That one left now 2-0 count here. So another batter that has gotten ahead of Glanzer here in the second. And in the first inning, she had a pretty big spot there. And like you said, she struck out. And now a base loaded opportunity for the third hitter. And that one just a little bit too low. So zone pretty tight here. And it's a 3-0 count now here. I doubt we see a swing coming from Stralo, even with all the power she has. Yep, she'll be taken all the way. And that one nowhere close to the plate. So another run walked across the board. And the Gophers now have two runs here without a hit in today's game. You have the most powerful hitter on this Gopher team up. And Den Hartog skies that one. This will be a hard one to track. But a nice play there by Carrillo and ends the inning with two Gopher runs only. But we see those two runs come across the board. And the South Dakota State lead is now only three, now 5-2, heading into the third inning here on Big Ten Plus. Yeah, we'll see if Levitt can calm down here a little bit in this third inning. It was almost a major disaster there for the Golden Gophers in the top of the second inning. Of course, we had some clarification on that um, second out in that inning. Um, that batter was out of bounds, and it was a strikeout. So, you know, it felt like Levitt Gave up like seven or eight runs in that inning, but she only let up four. So, you know, we have a close game here, five to two, and we'll see if Levitt uh, can settle down here in inning three. One one count so far to Lennox here. Powerful batter at the plate. That one in there, hit hard to left field. Evans ranges back, and that one is gone. Another home run for South Dakota State here. And Lennox gets her second big hit of the game, putting the game now to a 6-2 lead for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, just like the Golden Gophers, South Dakota State can, they can knock it out of the part as well as we look at the replay of that home run. It looked like it was maybe going to be borderline home run and borderline um, being at the wall there for the left fielder, but she was able to send that one out. And now it's six to two South Dakota State. No outs here in this top of the third inning. Yeah, and that one's hard there. Not a lot of movement on that pitch right in the middle of the zone. That one's a that one's a hard pitch to leave there if you're Levitt. You don't want to see a lot of pitches like that as you see her try to avoid that first pitch to Lindsey Culver. Culver today grounded out um, to the third baseman. Um, Chavez there in the first inning, ended that first inning. As you see there, another ball. So Levitt having a difficult time finding where she can put pitches in the strike zone that aren't hittable, as well as not throw a lot of balls there. You saw her put a very hittable ball put over the fence by Lennox, and now you see her try to avoid this strike zone a little bit, but now down 2-0 here. That one fouled back. Now 2-1 count here to Culver. Yeah, so far Levitt, you know, struggling with her command a little bit. Um, there's been lots of solid contact for South Dakota State, of course, with those two home runs, and there was a solid... Um, double in that second inning for Masterson as well. So, and you know, when she has been, hasn't been throwing strikes, like you said, she's been uh, throwing a lot of balls. But 
on a lot of those pitches, she's been close as well. There's been a lot of close pitches uh, for the um, Golden Gopher pitcher Levitt. The 2-2 pitch is in there for a strike. Very good count there from Levitt attacking there after getting down 2-0, coming back and getting the strike out there. So Levitt, though, with only one out here in the second, has thrown 53 pitches. So that'll be an interesting thing to note to see if she can start being a little bit more efficient here with these innings. Now here's Masterson up to the plate. A batter you do not want to throw a cookie to because she's been she's been seeing the ball very well as of late. Yeah, and she started that second um, second inning um, rally with a single, ending up scoring on that home run um, there by Carrillo. So a big spot here um, for Levitt to get out of this inning. One out here, only allowing that one home run. That pitch there inside now even to count 1-1. One, one. Masterson of Hartford, South Dakota. There she whiffs on that one. Now a one-two count here. So love it after striking out the last batter is doing a really good job putting the ball in multiple spots around the plate, not just allowing these hitters to have nice, easy pitches served up on a plate, really making the South Dakota State batters work for it. So doing a good job. We'll see what she does here, one, two, as that one's fouled back there by Masterson. Both pitchers, both um, Levitt and Glanzer are struggling a little bit, putting runners on um, both with a couple walks and Glanzer with the hit by pitch as well. So that one's hit hard down the line, foul there. But Levitt doing a good job attacking the batters now here. Wonder if that home run kind of sparked a little bit inside of her now. Um, now up in the count, one, two here. That one, two pitch. Swung on and missed, so Levitt with, there with two straight strikeouts now with two outs here in the third. Yeah, that was a great pitch there by Levitt. Little movement on that ball. And she sends Masterson down swinging there. Two outs now as um, Levitt's able to, she's been able to settle down now after that home run in the last couple at bats. There, another strike. So Levitt has kind of found her spot there on the outside bottom corner of the zone with that first pitch there to Brooke Dumont. Now an 0-1 count here. Here comes the 0-1 pitch here to Dumont. Another one there on the outside. That one misses just a little now, a 1-1 count, even count here. Dumont last at bat. The freshman struck out looking there against Levitt. Um, there in the second uh, was the first out there of the second inning for this team. That went down the line. Chavez stays fair. And interesting call there. Calls foul by the home plate umpire. Um, and we will see Dumont having a second chance here. Yeah, that was a v very close play there. It looked like... It was fair from our vantage point here, but yeah, the home plate umpire called that one off and we'll do it again. One and two on Masterson, or Dumont rather. There we see pitch a little bit too inside, so a pretty close play called foul now allows the batter on first after the hit pitch there by Levitt. And Carrillo will come up to the plate here. Jocelyn Carrillo walked in her um, first at bat there and the second was one of those run hit in um, by that home run by um, by Rosalind Creo. And 
And this is a big spot for Levitt. Has the two outs here, wants to get out of this inning. Has allowed a run in every inning, but to get out of this one, only allowing one run off of that one hit would be a big spot for Levitt. Um, now with 64 pitches thrown. That one there in for a strike. Levitt doing a good job in these last couple batters of attacking low in the zone, not allowing her pitches to get too high without um, taking these batters' um, eyes out of the play. So we'll see what she does here. Brings that one high, that one fouled directly back. And that's a big thing. If you're going to bring a ball high, you want to make sure it's not um, hittable there, or if it's hit, it's going to be popped up. If you if you leave one high up in the zone, it's easy for a batter to put that one deep and out, and we've seen that a couple of times so far in today's game. Well, another 1-2 count here on Carrillo. And that one inside, throw back over to first. Runner safe there, but smart play there by Kinch there. He saw the runner. Dumont a little bit off of first base, throws it back, just wasn't able to get the tag on there over at first. Two, two count here now with two outs. Big spot, big pitch here by Levitt. And that one swung and missed, so three strikeouts get Levitt out of the inning um, after that big home run by Lennox. Brings us up. Here we have Chloe Evans up to the plate. In her first bat at bat, she had a little bit of a pop out to the second baseman. Now down 0-1. Glanzer doing a good job so far today, attacking these gopher batters early up to another one here. Evans leaves that one high now, 1-1 one, one count here. Misses there again, now 2-1. Evans doing a good job. Evans a batter that walks a lot. Has walked 20 times on the season. Has seven home runs too. So someone that not only has power, but has great plate discipline and finds the pitches that she wants. Leaves that one high. Called for a strike, now he to count 2-2. Two, two. That one on the inside corner. Heard some cheering from the South Dakota State side, um, but ultimately that one called the ball. Now a full count here to Evans. Yeah, it looked like that one was inside there. So full count. Evans hits that one hard. Back out to left field. That one's trailing. That one hits off the top of the fence. Evans will have two. She's headed to three. That one will be a play at third, and she is safe. So. Evans with that ball tailing towards the left field line ends up with a triple here. As they still trail uh, six to two. Hard hit down the line and foul there for Megan Dre. We see Dre in her first at bat, striking out, swinging um, in the second, but now back up with a big spot here. Gophers with their first hit there um, by Evans would love another hit. Still down four runs to the Jackrabbits. That one high there, now you just count 1-1 one, one here. Megan Dre, a transfer student from North Carolina, from Virginia State originally. Another ball there now, 2-1 to Dre. Yeah, these Gophers have seen some very important transfers come in and be in this everyday lineup, big part of this Gopher team and has been part of the success as Dre puts that one deep into the gap and that one will score a run. So ultimately Dre is out at first, but 
Kinch will be up to the plate. That one's popped up over behind first, and we see Culver making another play, ranges over and it catches that one. So one pitch to Kinch, now we'll head to Dowell, who had that walk and ended up scoring there in the second last time she was up to the plate. Dowell leaves that one. Dowell, another one of these gopher batters that does a really good job walking. 14 walks so far on the season. You saw that 14th walk in the second inning, doing a really good job watching these pitches. That one coming in a little bit outside now. That one very far inside. Dowell stays in. Now a 3-0 count. Assuming Dowell not swinging here. So we'll see if Glanzer is able to come back with a strike here to keep Dowell in the batter's box. Yeah, Glanzer, she's third this inning. Uh, doing a good job at throwing strikes and getting ahead in the counts. And now she walks Dowell on four pitches. Hitting 282 on the season. A really strong person to have in this nine spot. And now with the runner on with two outs, the Gophers will see if they can get the two out rally here. And South Dakota State is going to want to try to squash anything after the Gophers score another run this inning. There, another pitch for a ball. So six straight balls here as we see the first baseman, Halverson, there checking on her pitcher. Chavez, she's from Chino Hills, California. And of course the pitcher, uh, Emma, or Emily uh, Levitt, she's from Chino, California. So I wonder if those um, towns have any relation with each other. Or if they're near each other, I'm not totally sure, but. That one catches the outside corner, so. That one, another close pitch. That one called a strike. Now a 2-1 count here to Chavez. Chavez hits that one back. That will be a difficult play there, but a nice play made by Carrillo there. And South Dakota State gets out of the inning, only allowing one run. Now Idaho State on the season. She has an ERA of 4.33. Also a record of 10 and 8 on the season. She's a senior on this Golden Gopher Club. Yeah, 11 and P's have done a, a pretty good job, both pitching for the basically the main two starters for this Gopher team, kind of trading off. But now you'll see them both in today's game here with P's coming on in relief. As we see that one not pulled back quick enough. Now a 0-2 count here. Yeah, good start for Pease getting ahead of that hitter. 0-1-2 here on the first batter for Pease. That one diving play there by Chavez isn't made, but a great effort there. Um, the count will stay 0-2 here. O2 pitch, not a full swing there, so now will be a 1-2 count. Looked like it was fairly close. Obviously, it was a check swing, but close play there for ball one. One and two now on Doherty. Great play there by Chavez. Stepping over the foul line there at third base, making that diving effort earlier and ultimately getting the out here on an awesome play, stretching out there. And now we head back to the top of the order with Osmondson here for South Dakota State. Yeah, that ball was hit pretty well there. And 
Yeah. Um, third baseman Chavez uh, made a nice play there for out number one. First pitch there, again, a strike followed back off there by Osmondson. So Pease doing a good job, something that Levitt wasn't able to do as much, get ahead early, get some of these swing and misses fouled back. Um, big spots here against this South Dakota State lineup that has a lot of power. And that one in there for a strike. So another 0-2 count here as Pease gets one in there. Uh, Smudson, she was a part of that uh, 2021 All Summit League team. There's actually eight players a part of that All Conference team last season. That pitch there, missing ball one. It's now a one two count here. That one high and inside. Osmondson does a good job letting that one go. So the one batter has been looking to push one there to the left side, but just hasn't had a pitch for her yet. Now even count 2-2. Two -two. We'll see what Pease does to come back here. That one in there for a strike. Strike three. So Pease gets her first strikeout of the game in her second batter here. And now two out here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, she's done a good job so far taming that potent South Dakota State lineup um, getting two quick outs here in this fourth inning. Carrillo back up to the plate. We'll see her last at bat. She had a home run and her first at heel will see the home run from her. That grand slam in the second inning very far over that fence ended up Scoring there, giving the, this lead that South Dakota State hasn't let up yet. That one's hit pretty hard as well. That one's going to head to right center. And Den Hartog makes a great play. So Den Hartog up a little bit there in center field. Is able to run back to the warning track and make a play stretching out there. So there in her two at-bats so far today. And this is a big spot for the Gophers coming to the top of their order in their third time up to the plate. Yeah, I would definitely say the 367 hitters do for a hit here. That one squared and missed there by Esplin, putting the count now to 0 2 here. So a big spot for her. She hasn't been down like this so far today. Um, and we'll see if Glancer attacks her again. Glancer has been attacking batters on the 0-2, not letting a lot of pitches go as she lets that one on the outside corner now, 1-2. That one, check. that one called a strike by the home plate umpire. So Esplin heads back, even though she checks her swing, that one barely catches the inside corner. A little bit of hesitation by Esplin. Does not help her, and that one is called out here as we get another strike here with the foul ball here by Jensen. Yeah, good start for Glanzer here in this bottom of the fourth inning starting off with a strikeout and the Gophers are going to have to continue their good at bats as another out there for Glanzer quickly two down here in the bottom of the fourth Stralo in her last at bat they're all the way back in the second walked let a run across the board um, with an RBI walk there in the second did strike out in her first at bat uh, but ultimately this is a big spot with the powerful hitter Den Hartog up behind her That one in there for strikes, even the count there, 1-1 one, one here to Stralo. Yeah, Glanzer, she's a very tough pitcher. Um, you know, it's going to be, if Glanzer goes the whole game, you know, it's 
They're going to have to string together some good at-bats like they were able to in the first couple innings. If they want to get some more runs, obviously Glanzer with a 2.11 ERA. Very good earned run average for the South Dakota State pitcher. That one sent over. This will be a close play over at first. And that will be an out here. So we see a, a one, two, three inning here by Glanzer as South Dakota State is able to keep their lead 6-3 as we head into the fifth here on Big Ten Plus. three here with South Dakota State, three batter Halverson up to the plate. Autumn Pease, number 25, back out for another inning of work. Really shut the door in that fourth inning, um, taming that South Dakota State lineup after they had a very powerful um, dynamite first couple innings. But the last couple innings now, it's been fairly quiet for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, I was surprised not to see Pease come out at any point um, with Levitt struggling, but now P's out here doing a really good job attacking these batters. There we see her come back now, 1-1 one, one count here to Halverson. And P's, statistically at least, a stronger pitcher of the two Gopher starters doing a really good job there as we see another swing and a miss here by the South Dakota State batters. And you still have to credit Levitt. Um, you know, she let up that home run to start the third inning. Um, on the first batter, but she was able to calm down there and end her out outing on a positive note. Yeah, that is true. She was able to strike out a couple batters to get herself out of that inning, um, but now Pease has the opportunity, doing a, a good job attacking these batters early, um, getting ahead in counts, and I think that's gonna be crucial if these Gophers are gonna wanna stay in this game, still down by three. The 2-2 pitch, swung on a miss. So the second strikeout by Pease there starts out this fifth inning as we head to Lennox, who has been a very dangerous batter so far today. Pease so far this season, as we see with the 433 average, 10-8 um, and eight record she has in 15 starts and 25 appearances. So. This is a big spot for her, too, here facing Lennox. So far, she's faced batters that Levitt was able to handle, but now she has to deal with the part of the order that we saw Levitt kind of struggle with. So we'll see what she's able to do against batters like Lennox. Lennox, the swing and a miss there. Now 0-2 count. So P's doing a, uh, continuing to do a good job attacking as we see here, the designated player in Lennox with that big RBI double in the first inning and then that home run that added an extra run in the fourth. BCP is not giving her anything nice here. Up 0-2, now a 1-2 count. You don't want to give a batter like Lennox, who is on fire so far today, a perfect pitch when you already are up 0-2. So we'll see if Pease decides to throw a similar pitch to get Lennox to chase outside the zone or if she goes back and attacks. And she comes back and attacks, just barely misses the zone there. You can see a little bit of smile on Adam Pease's face. She thought that one was in there. Uh, but ultimately, the count is now 2-2 two, two here. Yeah, not a bad pitch there. Obviously, you don't want to throw it right down the middle on a one-two pitch. So two and two now. We'll see what Pease does here. That one down in the zone. Now a full count. So Lennox doing a good job not chasing those pitches that Pease um, wanted her to. So we'll see Pease having to kind of come back at the batter who has a lot of power. So now most likely we're going to have Lennox swinging and Pease trying to attack the zone. And we'll see who has the upper hand on each other as Lennox pokes that one out there to right. 
Evans is able to make the play out there in right field. So we see Pease being able to kind of come through uh, the South Dakota State batters now with multiple outs in a row, now two outs here in the fifth. We will now have Lindsey Culver up to the plate. Culver so far today 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout on the day. That, one, that first pitch fouled directly back. These are something that the South Dakota State hitters are going to have to start doing is swinging at those first pitches as Pease is giving them first pitch strikes where Levitt was not. So as you see there, they kind of adjusted here. Now Lindsey Culver doing a good job trying to attack on that first pitch. That went high there. Checked up by Culver now, even to count now 1-1. The 1-1 pitch in there low, but a ball now 2-1 count there. Pees doing a good job kind of sprinkling around that zone. That one just doesn't get in there, but a good pitch there. But the count is now 2-1. That one drops in high for a ball. Now 3-1 count here with two outs. This is a big spot you don't want to allow the batter to have the perfect pitch with the hitters count, but also you don't want to allow your first free base runner of the day. Yeah, good eye there by um, Culver so far in the at bat. There you see down in left field, a diving play unable to be made there by Jensen, but a very athletic play to be able to get out and get in front of that one. And her being able to just stop that one, as we see here on the replay, will keep the runner at first. Yeah, nice effort there by the left fielder, Jensen. She almost got that one, almost made that. Sports Center top 10 play there, quite possibly. But you're right, you know, she's lucky that ball didn't go past her either. She's able to stop that despite not making the catch. That one driven out to center field, and that's a home run. So we see Masterson there with the home run, puts a, another one out here for the Jackrabbits and puts that lead now to 8 3 here for South Dakota State. Her, her fourth home run in her last six at bats, and she continues her, um, you know, impressive streak of hitting the ball out of the ballpark. And of course, she had that hard hit single in her first at bat. So, yeah, Masterson red hot for the South Dakota State team. Yeah, and P's doing a great job attacking these batters, but. That one there, just a little bit of a mistake now. And now we see a pretty big lead here for South Dakota State. And with a team that's pitching pretty well, this will be a big hole for the Gophers to get out of. Now headed to Brooke Dumont here, who's 0 for 1 on the day. Chavez doing, making a nice play, that ball foul again. Chavez doing, doing that a couple times, snagging that ball just as it goes foul, um, making a good play, but that sends the batter back into the batter's box as a couple of those have been foul. So we'll see Dumont having a second chance here with the 1-1 count. That one bounces just over the plate, puts the count to 2-1 here. Yeah, P, she falls back in the count once again. You know, she started this inning um, doing a good job at getting ahead and getting those first pitch strikes, and now she's falling behind and has let up that home run now. That one in the gap, unable to be corralled in by any Gopher players and puts 
Dumont there on first. So three straight batters on or batters hit there uh, for Pease and it will head to Carrillo here in the eighth spot um, to the 0-1 sophomore hitter on the day. Yoder one for four on stolen bases so far this season. So a little bit, they like to run her as that one's fouled just out of play here. So starts the count now 0-1 with that foul ball here to Carrillo. The 0 1 pitch dropped in there perfectly by Pease. Puts the count to 0 2. This is a big pitch for Pease. Wonder if she'll continue to attack, just wanting to get out of this inning after allowing a couple runs now. And also attacking this bottom of the order um, will be big for her to just to try to get out. There she goes. She continues to attack, gets out of this inning but not after we see another home run, scores two more runs for the Jackrabbits, see if they can do the same. As we see Den Hartog put that one down. Great play there, out there in left by Doherty, but that one bounces off the turret. So Den Hartog gets the second gopher hit of the day. We'll have Chloe Evans here, who had that really well hit triple that tailed out there in left field last time as she swings and misses on that first one. This would be a big spot for Evans to continue her success so far here with a runner on and no outs in the fifth. Yeah, despite scoring three runs so far, Minnesota hasn't really been able to string together um, some hits and some walks, so we'll see if they can begin to do that here in this fifth inning. That ball there evens the count now, 1-1 one, one here. That one misses again now, 2-1 count to Evans. We see a defensive change. We have Yoder now behind the plate here at catcher for the Jackrabbits after pinch running last inning. Another miss there by Glanzer now has a 3-1 count here to Evans. Evans leaves that one, so now runners on first and second. This is a big spot for the Gophers, down five here in the fifth. Yeah, Dre, she's on a five-game hitting streak, looking to extend that here in a big spot for the Golden Gophers. Runners at first and second and no outs. And like you said, they trail by five runs, so if they're able to get a little rally going here, it will definitely make things interesting. Dre with that RBI ground out last inning. In a similar spot with runners on. Now with runners on first and second, she gets her first strike there even in the count, 1-1. One, one. Um, but a batter that does really, uh, that has struggled a little bit with runners on so far this season, but did a good job in today's game to put the runners around. That one there, she leaves now 2-1 count here. And it's also a big spot for Glanzer too. Has two runners on, zero outs, coming to that bottom of the order that she's done pretty well against. So we'll see if she attacks these batters or if she's a little bit hesitant. And a very nice play over there by Masterson. Uh, Masterson, of course, she's two for three in the ball game. That one's hit pretty hard for the Gophers and is a ground rule double there. So we see a interesting turn of events as Carrillo there in center isn't able to take that one and the Gophers will put a run across the board with this ground rule double that almost goes out there from Kinch. 
Yeah, Kareem. Big spot here for McKenna Dowell. So far today, two walks, scored one of the gopher runs after walking, leaves that one. Like we've talked about today, Dowell doing a really good job um, at the plate, watches a lot of pitches. Um, as we can see the stats from Tori Kanishi here, 1.78 ERA with a 11 and five record. She started 17 games, pitch and 20. Dowell up the middle, that will score at least one. Runner held there at third, but Dowell with a great game so far, watching pitches, and now she finds the pitch she wants and puts the Gophers to now only down three runs here in the bottom of the fifth. Um, with eight RBIs on the season, only in those limited amount of at-bats, does a really good job putting the ball in play. Doesn't strike out a lot, does a good job watching pitches, has more strike uh, walks and strikeouts, so this is a big spot for her to come in cold. Um, but we'll see if she's able to make a big contribution here for the Gophers. And Emily Hansen, she's a native of Buffalo, Minnesota, senior on this Golden Gopher squad. And on the South Dakota State side, they have a player who's also from Buffalo, Minnesota, played at Buffalo High School. She's a junior, and that is Morgan DeMars. So I'm, both, I'm sure both of, those, both of those players played with each other at Buffalo High School. Yeah, it's a big spot here for the Minnesota native to come in in a very big game. That one swung and missed. Even the count now 2-2. Two, two. Hanson there didn't wasn't able to really track that ball coming in. This is a big spot with runners on the corners. She is the tying run herself. Very nice play behind the plate there by Yoder. Keeps the runner on third as she kind of snow cones that one there, hopping up high and catching it. Hansen fouls that one off, stays alive with this full count here. Didn't look to be her pitch. She fouls that one off and has another opportunity to get another one here from Kanishi. Hanson puts that one in over the shortstop and another run will score. So now the Gophers are down eight to six here. As we see Lauren Espelin here up to the plate. Um, she walked in the first, was hit by a run score, or hit by a pitch scoring a run in the second. Um, and now has the opportunity to put more runners on the board for, or more runs on the board here for the Gophers. Um, and also a small change. We see Chavez after being pinch hit come back out to run for herself over there on first. So now Dowell at second, Chavez at first, and a big spot for the Gophers here with only one out. Yeah, two pitches ago, uh, catcher Allison Yoder made another nice stop there as um, the South Dakota State um, pitcher uh, struggling with command, uh, Kanishi. Couple pitches that were that were uh, way over the head of the catcher Yoder. So yeah, you got to credit Yoder for stopping those pitches, or else um, the runners on the bases would have advanced. Yeah, and this is a, also a tough spot to come in if you're Yoder too. You get a pitcher um, coming in off the bench, and then you got another pitcher that you have to um, kind of deal with, and that pitcher seems to be struggling a little bit here for the Jackrabbits. So. A big spot for this Jackrabbits team as they kind of bring that one back in with the 3-0 count. Now 3-1 here at Espelin. Think she'll be green lighted here? Yeah, hitters count with runners on. One of your best hitters up at the plate. She's gonna have the green light. That one just swung and missed. You can see Espelin almost a little bit mad at herself there. She really wanted that one and now she has a full count. A big spot for her and Bear, a lot of pressure here too um, for the Gophers. That one comes in. Espelin runs over to first. That one a ball, so.
in. That one very high there as Jensen leaves that one. Ellie Jensen so far today, 0 for 3, has hit the ball pretty well, put the ball in play, but just hasn't been able to find a spot um, where the South Dakota State team isn't. So we'll see if she can here as that one's fouled directly back. Yeah, really big spot here for Ellie Jensen. As like you said, she's 0 for 3, but she is also on a six game hitting streak coming into this game. And also in the last two games, two hits, like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast. So she's one swing away from having a huge hit in this ball game. And we see the outfield for South Dakota State really, really close. A little poke over their head could score up to three runs here for the Gophers, giving them the lead. We have the tying run on second. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not Jensen's able to put a ball in play because a ball in play might be a big spot here for the Gophers. We see Kanishi though doing a good job coming back in the count attacking Jensen after letting Esplin go on the walk there to load the bases. So now a 2-2 count. A strikeout here would be big for South Dakota State. That one hit up the middle. Diving play. Very nice play there by Culver. Makes an out. Um, but a run comes across the board. So Jensen pushes across another go for run. And now the lead is only one for South Dakota State. Here we can see the great play by Culver. Trips up a little bit, but she's able to make that play over at second. Now Strailer's, Strailo's up to bat. Looking to tie the game up. That one high and inside to Strelo here. Strelo so far today, 0 for 2. She had that walk um, in the second that ended up scoring a run. But she put a ball hard to the shortstop last time. See if she can squeak one by or if she continues to have a little bit of a rougher day. Strelo put in this three spot, not her normal spot. This is normally a spot like we talked about earlier, that's inhabited by Natalie Denhartog, as we see a ball squeak out onto the field coming from the South Dakota State side. Kanishi down early again, now a 2-0 count here. That one high for a strike there, catches the zone. Not sure what's being discussed here between the third base umpire and the home plate umpire. Mound long enough. Now a 2-2 count here, so we'll see if Strelo here with two outs. Oh, that one called a ball, excuse me there. Now a 3-1 count. That one fouled back. Now the count is full here to Strelo. It's a big pitch for both teams. One run lead for South Dakota State. That tying run on third base for the Gophers. Strelo fouls that one directly back. She's not going to go easy here. Kanishi doing a good job, continuing to attack after getting down early. Um, runners on the corner, so a hit here by Strelo would tie the game, uh, but a strike coming across the plate would allow South Dakota State to go in with the lead here. And now a strike out there by Kanishi sends Strelo back to the bench, and South Dakota State will head into the sixth inning. Now with only a one-run lead after the Gophers put on four runs here in the bottom of the fifth. South Dakota State gets another at-bat here in the sixth inning as we see one poked over second base there by Doherty. And now with a runner on first with zero outs, it's a big spot here for Pease to come and attack the freshman who's getting the at-bat here in the sixth. Yeah, Jarecki, she has an average of 245 on the season. Three home runs, 15 RBIs. So definitely some pop in this bat as well for South Dakota State. That one fouled directly back there. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have someone that you can come in and put into the game. 
when some of your top of the order hitters aren't hitting as well as you want. And we saw that Osmondson was struggling a little bit at the play, and then now Jarecki has the opportunity here. Yeah, the South Dakota State Club is a nice team, well-rounded team. They have really powerful hitting. They have good pitching. You know, their top two pitchers, very um, strong pitchers. So this has been a fun team to watch, and, you know, they have some depth as well with uh, Jarecki batting right now off the bench. Yeah, this is the 25th game Jarecki has played. She started 12 of these games so far this season. So kind of that one person that kind of cycles in to the lineup every once in a while. Um, be interesting to see if they keep her in the field for the bottom of the six. Uh, but ultimately, she's up to the plate now here with a 2-2 count here against Autumn Pease. That one... Very close there at first. Stralo made, it kind of popped up kind of slowly. If that one would have been hit a little bit harder, wonder if that would have been an out there at first. Be interesting to see this one here. Looked pretty close up here from the booth. Yeah, that was a nice heads up play there by Stralo. And when she was making the throw, it looked like it wasn't gonna be close, but it was fairly close actually. But the runner there was able to get back to first base. And that one's hit hard out to center field. Den Hartog doesn't have to go too far back. He's able to make the play. And now two outs here, so a little bit of pressure early from that little slap by Doherty. And now two straight outs will have the Gophers one out away from getting out of this inning. As we see the pop up there from Carrillo. And now we have Halverson up to the plate again. 0 for 3 so far today. Has flown out in the first inning as you see her swing and miss there. In the fifth when she faced Pease for the first time, ended up striking out. So we'll see if Pease has her number again or if Halverson is able to put the ball in play and move some runners around um, for the Jackrabbits. You really got to credit Pease here. She Gave up that hit on the first pitch of the inning, and now she's able to get two quick outs. Now it all comes down to Halverson, who is 0 for 3 in the game. Yeah, besides for that fifth inning, these three innings pitched here by Pease have been pretty well done by her, but it'll be interesting to see if she can get out of here and send the Gophers up to bat quickly again, too, because the Gophers were pretty on fire when they ended that fifth inning and if they can get to the bats quickly after a quick inning pitched here by Pease this would be an interesting spot down one for the Gophers. It's a one two count here from Pease to Halverson. That one hit hard down the line that one will head foul. So Halverson not going easily there follows that one off um, but the count stays one and two here with two out. That one there kicked a little bit on accident there by Halverson, but nothing bad happening. Now a two two count here with two outs. Interesting to see if Pease will come back with a strike here after kind of having her opportunity to throw around the batter so far getting up early. Off the glove of Chavez there, so a possible play that could have been made. Most likely to be scored a hit. That one was hit pretty hard in the gap, but Chavez is not able to make the play, and now there's two runners on here for South Dakota State. Yeah, just a bouncing ball there through the infield, and yeah, it, Chavez just wasn't able to uh, come up with that one. So, not sure if that's gonna be a hit or 
or an error. But. Yeah, that one will be scored a hit. That one was hit pretty hard. And now we have Lennox up to the plate, who in her first two at-bats was super successful with that double RBI double and that solo home run. Handle Levitt pretty well, but Pease has kind of done a good job not giving her too many good pitches to swing at, kind of poking around the zone. So we'll see if Lennox has a chance to put one of these balls in play with the runners on first and second. That 1-1 one, one pitch swung on and missed. That one coming in very fast there from Autumn Pease. In a difficult spot if you're Lennox, you know, she's had a really good eye today, not chase a lot of pitches, found her pitches, but now down 1-2. You're going to want to try to stay alive, and we'll see if Pease is able to make her chase or if Lennox does a good job watching these pitches again. That one in the outside corner, great eye there at the plate by Lennox, now even to count 2-2. Two -two. Of course, uh, Lennox and South Dakota State looking to get some insurance here as they only lead by one run, 8-7 to seven over Minnesota here in the top of the sixth. Big pitch here. Yeah, crucial spot to get some runs. Minnesota with two at-bats possibly left to score some runs to come back. This if. Lennox is out here. South Dakota will only have one more at bat um, or ups, out two bat here in the game. So a big spot here for Lennox who's had a big day so far. That one hit slowly too short. Dowell makes a very nice play, throws it over to Stralo and the Gophers get out of this inning with another scoreless um, inning by Pease and they will head into the bottom of the sixth, only down one run after scoring four in the bottom of the fifth here on Big Ten Plus. That one misses very far by Kanishi there. Multiple feet over Yoder, the catcher. And will start Den Hartog up 1-0 here in the count. Yeah, Kanishi, she's struggled with her command a little bit. Um, there's been about three or four pitches that have been very high over the heads of the catcher and the batter. There we see that one barely missing on the outside corner now. 2-0 here to Natalie Denhartog. That one checked. That one comes in high for a strike. Now a 2-1 count here. Swing and a miss. That's the pitch that Natalie Denhartog loves, that, that fastball or rise up high in the zone that she can put out, but she isn't able to handle that one. Now even to count 2-2 here. We'll see if Kanishi is able to throw, or decides to throw another pitch up there. It'll be interesting to see if she stays low against Denhartog. That one hit hard and deep by Natalie Denhartog. And that one will hit the wall, bounce very far back into play. And it will be a triple. We'll see there if Osmondson is okay. She ran pretty hard into the wall there, chasing. And that triple for the Gophers, that's their second triple of the ball game. Of course, Evans had that triple that was shot over to left field. And then now Den Hartog. Had that blast to center field. Big hit there to start the inning. Question here by Piper Ritter or possible substitution. Misses high there, 2-0 count here to Evans. Yeah, there might possibly be a pinch runner or pitch hitter um, in the next at-bats or two. 
see what happens after this at bat. That one inside. That one was a very close pitch. Surprised not that one was not called a strike. Puts the count to 3-0 here to Evans. Evans walked after Den Hartog last inning, ended up scoring there in the fifth. We'll see if she's able to do the same here in the sixth. That one's high out of the zone. <laughs> And we see Evans with another walk here so on third to score. They're going to just allow the runner to move to second, which is ultimately probably a good play. No need to make an error or to allow Den Hartog to score. They're going to just let Evans walk over to second. Now runners in scoring position here for Dre who is with that one called late there, now is down 0-2. Yeah, if you're Dre, all you have to do right now is get that ball in play, and it's all you really have to do, like I said. Leaves that one high, very good eye by Dre. We saw that Kinesi probably wanted her to chase there, but she leaves that one. That one hit pretty hard, but directly foul there by Dre. Dre doing a good job staying in this count. Now 1-2 here. Big spot for her. Basically any ball put into play probably scores a run here for the Gophers, tying up the game. So we'll see if Kinesi gives her another pitch here. And that one high. Dre does not leave that one. Swing and a miss, so a strike out there, her second of the game. Will now make it one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Um, Kinch will get an opportunity here. K and Kinch does a great job putting down the perfect bunt. That was almost a little bit unexpected. We see a little bit of almost uh, a, a squeeze play yeah, across there. the board. Almost looked like uh, the catcher Yoder kind of forgot about um, Den Hartog there at third base. Yeah, that's not a play you want your catcher to be making. You know, like we talked about, you want to try to block that runner. And this is a spot where Yoder kind of forgets, moves forward, and the run scores. So Kinch puts down a perfect bunch, and now the game is tied 8-8 eight to eight here in the bottom of the six with two outs, big spot for Dowell with a runner on third. That would be the, the leading run here for the Gophers. And there we see an out at third. So we see maybe a little bit of forgetful play there by Evans. She thinks that maybe she has a free bag there with the walk. And, all, and that is a big blunder there by the Gophers who had the free base there. Be interesting to see if, and she was out. That was a very bang bang play there. He's back on the mound, on in the circle here for the Gophers. We have Culver up to the plate with the one for three day. Ended up scoring in that fifth inning. One of the, I think she was the last batter to score here for the Jackrabbits. And now she's up to the plate here in the seventh. Perfect. Ball dropped in there by Pease. Now even to count 1-1. One, one. Yeah, this has been a great game so far. Eight to eight now here in the seventh inning. You can't ask for much more in a softball game. And quite the difference from that last meeting back in 2015 where the Gophers beat the Jackrabbits 20 to three. And that included a 16 run first inning in that ball game that was played in Fresno, California.
That one popped up. It's going to be in between there, there, but Strelo does a good job ranging back, catching that one for the first out here of the seventh. Uh, a connecting state rival here in the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Minnesota has kind of always had South Dakota State's number, and now South Dakota State is, you know, one run away from a victory here against the Gophers, tied 8-8 here um, as the first pitch there by Pease misses against Masterson. That one put down the line, foul there. So now a 1-1 one, one count here. Yep, 2-1 count here. Here's the 2-1 pitch from Pease coming in. That one drops in there for a strike now. Evens the count, 2-2 two, two here. Big spot, Masterson with that home run in the fifth with that big spot also in the first, or in the second inning. This is a batter who has had Minnesota's number so far today. And now a 2-2 count. That one high left there by Masterson. Now a 3-2 full count here. So a big pitch. Yeah, this is a really big at, uh, a big at bat here for um, South Dakota State. Masterson, like we've mentioned many times, red hot in her last few games. and. She's doing it again here this afternoon, two for three, and now she drives a walk to start this inning. Yeah, and that one was a very close one to leave. But now you have a runner on first here, headed to Yoder, getting her second at, or this might be her first at bat of the game, excuse me. She, pin she pinched run um, back in the fifth, and now she is here with her first at bat of the game in a very big spot here for the Jackrabbits. Nice pitch, drops in there for Autumn Pease to get the count now to 0-1. Yoder on the season, she's batting 309 for the Jackrabbits. That one came in with a little extra speed there by Pease. Now a 0-2 count here. Yoder has had 29 starts so far this season, has been in 34 of the 36 games, um, came in late of this game, but has done a really good job behind the plate um, for the Jackrabbits, as well as taking out that last out there in the bottom of the six. Now has an opportunity to do some offense for her team. Big pitch coming from Pease here. That one down the line stays foul, so count will stay 1-2 here. Pease gets ready here. We think here she'll probably continue to attack the batter, not allow the junior catcher to settle in here at all in her first at bat of the day. That one right in there for a strike three. No doubt about that one. That one drop ball perfectly in the zone. And now there'll be two outs here in the top of the seventh. One out away from the Gophers having a chance to head to the bottom of the seventh with a chance to win. Here we see that pitch again, perfectly dropping in the zone. Very interested why Yoder didn't swing. Maybe just a little bit too late on that one. As we see another strike by Pease as she continues to attack these batters. Yeah, she's having a very good outing. That was her fourth strikeout of her outing that's lasted three and two thirds innings.
Jocelyn Carrillo up to the mound now. Has not put a ball in play yet. The count's now even 1-1. One, one. Carrillo so far today walked and scored in the second, but has struck an out the last two times up to the plate and has struck out in the only meeting against Autumn P so far today. That one fouled back. Now the count is one and two here. A big pitch for both teams. This might be South Dakota State's last opportunity here with the one, two count and two outs. And a big spot for Pease and Minnesota to get out of this inning with an opportunity to break open a walk off score in the bottom of the seventh. That one catches the zone and the peas will get her fifth strikeout and head back to the dugout. Hey, coming back in here to close out the game. Eight, eight is the score, so either we will have extra innings or the Gophers will walk off here in the bottom of the seventh. Kayla Chavez will get the first at bat here for the Gophers. The freshman today has only had two at bats. That one fouled directly behind her. Ended up walking in the second and grounded out to short in the third inning. So a big spot for the freshman here to turn the order back over to the top of the lineup here for the Gophers. And of course, when Glanzer left the game, the Gophers were starting to get to her. They were starting to get some hits and some runs as well. And that one fouled directly back. That one leaves. The field, nice catch by the fan over there in the crowd. Um, the Gophers once again here in the seventh inning. And that is a swing and a miss. She's been on base so, three times so far today. Has had some really great at bats. Walked twice, hit by pitch once. Um, ended up, she hasn't even put a ball into play so far today. Um, did strike out looking in the fourth, so she it's probably going to be a challenge a little bit here by Glanzer. That one misses there. Now a 2-1 count here to Espelin. Espelin with four home runs on the season. That one hit hard and a great catch over in right field by Osmondson there. Jensen Squares leaves that one. That will be a ball there high now 1-0. That one called a ball there. So two pretty close pitches there. Will ultimately be a ball now, a 2-0 count here to Jensen. Yeah, Jensen looking to get something going here in this game. 0 for 4 as the two hitter for the Gophers. That one hit hard into the gap. But a nice play over there by Doherty. And to South. account for eight runs. And then for Minnesota, they've been using... You know, they're able to string some hits together and also use some small ball as well. So, yeah, different styles of offense here in this one today. Nani Valencia getting the opportunity to pitch here for the Gophers so far this season. This is her fifth appearance with a 6.56 ERA. This is only... A her sixth inning pitch, she's pitched five and one third inning so far this season. So a very interesting spot to see Valencia as this is a crucial spot for the Gophers here. Um, tied in extras, 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, Nani Valencia, freshman on this Golden Gopher team from Georgetown, Kentucky. That back off of Valencia, Dowell makes a very good play. 
and that one is called safe at first. Was Doherty there? So the South Dakota State Jackrabbits will have someone on first as that slap bunt there missed by Odmanson. Yeah, that was a very close play there. Um, initially, I thought she was out from our vantage point, but yeah, that was very close. Um, you got to credit um, the shortstop, Dowell. She made a very nice play there, but came up just short. And yeah, like you said, runner at first now, no outs in the top of the eighth inning. We're in extra innings here in Minneapolis. Now a 1-1 one, one count here to Osmondson. Throw over there by Kinch. Pretty easy get back there over at first. 2-1 count here now for Osmondson, who hasn't had a hit so far today. Struck out twice, but a big spot as she fouls that one back. So isn't able to put any balls down here now with two strikes. Interesting to see if she continues to try to put one down or if she'll try to slap one there to the left side. Stralo makes a great play and a double play by the Gophers. Stralo is hyped up and that one high in inside here. Rosalind Carrillo up to the plate, had that big home run that started the South Dakota um, big second inning. Actually, that was that grand slam in that South Dakota second inning and has a lot of power. That ball headed to a very similar area, but not the same amount of distance. So Jensen makes a nice play. Yeah, for, to Grace Glanzer here coming up in this inning. Yeah, the Gophers will have another opportunity here to walk off the South Dakota State University Jackrabbits. Um, Glanzer really shut the door in that seventh inning and uh, forced extra innings here. That pitch catches that bottom outside of the zone. Now it ties the count up 1-1 one, one here. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Stralo. Glanzer checks and throws. That one hit hard by Sydney Stralo. And that one is gone. One batter is all these Gophers need. And Sydney Stralo is the lady of the day with an absolute bomb here in the bottom of the eighth. Gives the Gophers the 9-8 victory here in this one game against the South Dakota State Jackrabbits here in Minneapolis.